This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1724. Financial FOMO, what, why, and how to avoid it. Part two by Joel of 5amjoel.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Now today's post is a continuation from yesterday. So if you're new here, I'd recommend listening to yesterday's episode first. But if you're all caught up, let's hear part two and continue optimizing your life. Financial FOMO, what, why, and how to avoid it. Part two by Joel of 5amjoel.com. Problems created by FOMO. You may read the story previously mentioned and think that Steve hasn't actually done anything wrong. And he hasn't really. But there are a few small issues with Steve's thought process that make him his own worst nightmare. Continuing down a path like his can lead to several big issues later. Number one, subconsciously comparing himself to others. While Steve loves hearing stories about successful entrepreneurs, in the back of his mind, he's comparing himself to each of them, their age, their income, their net worth, their brilliant investing strategies. Since there's an unlimited amount of richer, smarter, and younger people in the world, Steve is setting himself up to feel subpar for the rest of his life. Number two, analysis paralysis. Steve is eager to learn, so he thinks the more information he can stuff into his brain, the better. The problem here is if Steve doesn't pick a specific strategy and take action, he will never get anywhere. Number three, impulse or emotional investing, the opposite of analysis paralysis. One day, Steve might just take Tom's advice and buy Bitcoin when he gets home from the bar. No research, no thought, just buying so that he doesn't miss out. This is a big financial no-no. And number four, beware of false profits. Steve's FOMO alters his vision of reality. He only sees and hears winning stories. In his mind, every person, except him, is making sound financial decisions and big profits. This is definitely not real life. Similar to browsing someone's Facebook profile, people usually only post their good photos, good stories, and share good times. The bad stuff is hidden, but it doesn't mean it's not there. Can you relate? Does this remind you of anything you've experienced recently? Maybe you have a little financial FOMO. The fact is, everyone misses out on something. Nobody can do it all, have it all, learn it all, or know it all. You can't control how quickly the world moves. But what you can control is how you feel about it. You can control your reaction, your response, and your future. Let's now talk about the antidotes to financial FOMO. Financial FOMO antidotes. Number one, appreciation. Think about all the things you do have instead of all the things you don't have. Financially speaking, simply focus on your existing investments that are already serving you well instead of the other million strategies that you've never tried. In Steve's example, he actually already has $800,000 in a brokerage account invested in low-cost index funds. He accumulated this the slow and boring way via maxing out his 401k each year. Steve has more money than most people will ever have in their life, yet he still feels like a peasant. Steve's frustration and financial FOMO will continue until he starts appreciating what he already has. Number two, JOMO. This is the joy of missing out. For every financial upside, there is an equal invisible downside. Be thankful for the downsides you're missing out on. Your friends own rental properties and you don't? Instead of feeling bad, you should feel joy. You are missing out on the hundreds of headaches, tenant issues, broken toilets, and trash units that landlords have to deal with. Missing out gives you more time to focus on other stuff that matters to you. Think less equals more. Number three, low information diet. Limit the amount of stuff you let into your brain, especially first thing in the morning. Cut down the amount of news you read, podcasts you listen to, and other people's boasting stories and gossip. Instead, fill your life with real experiences. Good news, Steve eventually uses this tactic. 
he stopped listening to podcasts in the mornings and instead he spent two hours each day interning for his dad's wealthy friend's company. Steve is happier than ever and getting hands-on experience. And number four, stop comparing yourself to others, especially the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world. It's never gonna be a fair comparison. When you study someone else, you're comparing their outsides with your insides. The outside appearance of people, namely rich, famous millionaires and entrepreneurs, will always trump your inside feelings about yourself. Quote, you are the only you in this world and the only you that will ever exist. There is no comparison, end quote. All roads lead to Rome. No matter what your path is up the financial mountain, everyone ends up at the top, old, wise, wealthy, and happy. Enjoy the road you're on or switch to another road if you're truly unhappy. Just don't worry about everyone else's trails. It's impossible to climb a mountain via two routes simultaneously. Rest well knowing that you'll see everyone at the top. You just listened to part two of the post titled Financial FOMO, What, Why, and How to Avoid It by Joel of 5amjoel.com. Now I'm sure you know, a lot of investment apps make it easy to start trading, but just because it's easy to do doesn't mean you know what you're doing. That's what makes Wealthfront different. They make it easy to invest and they make it easy to get smarter about investing. After answering just a couple of questions, Wealthfront will build you a diversified portfolio of low cost index funds in minutes. You can also build your own portfolio with clean energy funds, crypto trusts, cannabis, tech, and hundreds of other investments, including a socially responsible portfolio. Best of all, Wealthfront is totally automated. They do all the trading, all the rebalancing, and they even help you lower your tax bill while you invest. Wealthfront is trusted with over 27 billion in assets, helping nearly half a million people build their wealth. To start building your wealth and get your first $5,000 managed for free, for life, go to wealthfront.com slash OFD. That's W-E-A-L-T-H-F-R-O-N-T dot com slash OFD to start building your wealth. That's wealthfront.com slash OFD to get started today. This article reminded me that part of maintaining a positive mindset about our finances is to not compare ourselves to others. We're all guilty of it. So I, for one, am grateful for the reminder. I recall a time last year when my monthly savings rate was 45% rather than my 60% goal. And I thought about the other people in the FI community who are saving even more than that. I felt bad for a moment for not hitting my goal until I realized how ridiculous that is. 45% is a fantastic savings rate. It's way more than I ever thought was possible when I was 30 grand in debt six years ago. While others can provide great inspiration and give us ideas of what's possible with our money, personal finance is a very personal journey. And it's a lifelong journey that we can make way more enjoyable by celebrating every win, big or small. I like when Joel encourages us here to not compare someone else's outside with our inside. When we perceive someone else succeeding financially, we assume they are living a happy and fulfilling life. But you can never know another person's inner life. And many people surrounded by luxury or financial success are deeply unhappy. While you can't buy real lasting happiness, you can cultivate it through the way you spend your time and energy and the people you surround yourself with. And this is where money plays an important role. It can give you more autonomy over your time and energy. And that might actually be a lot less expensive than you think. That's another episode and weekend of Optimal Finance Daily in the books. Thank you for your support and for listening every day. I'll be back with more posts for you on Monday. So have a great rest of your weekend and I'll catch you tomorrow where optimal life awaits.